What's going on guys? This is uh, Greg with NC Forestry Mulching. I want to do a quick video. Um, I'm here, out here doing a job um, at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, it's about a two acre job. You can see behind me, it's a bunch of deadfall. Just stuff crossed up. It's two acres and basically what I'm doing is I'm going in, I'm clearing. And then like that hardwood that's over here that is right there it's a hardwood that's a pine but like leaving some of these hardwoods for the client um that they wanted to leave them and uh so that's what we're doing it's about two acre job come in um i priced it right so it's the only job i'll do this week um i've got to start a job at the end of the week but that's basically a job for next week um so i guess uh I wanted to do a video basically I got to thinking you know when you get when you become self-employed um, you know you you start you stop thinking about eating off the dollar menu and you know I'm, I'm a type of person I like filet mignon myself um, however I guess what I'm getting to with that is we've got a few you know we got a lot of guys getting into this and you know my only piece of advice to anybody getting into this is don't do like the landscape industry's done don't go in and ruin the market people are willing to pay for a good service if you do a good service for people they're gonna pay i mean it's it's no way around it if you want to be the low guy on the totem pole well first off you can't get to so much work i have people blow me up every day and i mean i just I try to get to them and you know if I can't get to them I'll refer them to someone else um, that can but we have a guy local to me which it don't matter I don't care I travel everywhere um, a guy is probably he's probably within I'd say uh, 13 miles from me they got a landscape business um, his dad his grandpa's got a bunch of money so he went and bought this forestry mulcher now this boy ain't never had to work for nothing and basically i'm not gonna name any names i don't do that but um if you were around this area it would be hard to know who it is um basically he's charging like eight to nine hundred dollars a day now i'm not really big on the day charging deal because like i just told you i'm at this job i figured this job to do it this week it takes me four days i'm still in the green it ain't but two acres um if it takes me six days i didn't do too well but you know like i said it's a bunch of deadfall you can see they just a bunch of just junk crossed up everywhere it's, it's all pines um easiest tree to take down i love these jobs a um, bunch of grinding but it's easy it's not a bunch of hardwoods in here. I'm actually leaving uh, all the good hardwoods. Anything that's dead, I'm taking out. But, you know, I wanted to basically do this video like, don't sell yourself short on these jobs because you're only screwing yourself. There's enough work out here for everybody. There's work everywhere. I mean, even if the economy goes down, there's still going to be work because there's still people that's not broke. There's, get you a good name, put you a good footprint down, and rock and roll. Just go with it. I mean, I started this, and be honest with you, I was scared to death. Um, and I've already got an established business that my guys run for me. <clears throat> I've had it for 12 years. And, you know, I've got a guy that handles my landscape side of it. And I basically do the forestry clearing myself. Um, you know, there's so much work, there's no sense in, in coming in and going and buying a brand new machine and just because it's shiny, you want to go work. Uh, this same, this gentleman I'm talking about that I referred to a minute ago, he basically had made a comment, um, he was just trying to get work, you know, just trying to get his name out. Well, getting your name out is not going to... What, what you need to do when you buy a piece of equipment is you, if you've got some land or you've got a family member that's got some land, and about all of us do, 
uh go learn go get good at it figure it out and then go out and start pricing right price figure out how much fuel costs you figure out how much your your tracks are going to cost you when they get replaced i know uh ryan huddo with uh i think it's huddo track um you guys check him out ryan uh i contacted him for some tracks but i ended up having to get them somewhere else that had them quick because i had a newborn baby being born at the same time and i had a bunch of stuff going on and you know but i didn't i guess what i'm saying i didn't have to dig around for 2600 bucks for tracks i went paid for them put them on i had i had a guy working for me that put too much grease in one of my tracks and it just imploded or exploded but um you know, if you check out Ryan Hutto, you can look him up on Facebook. He's a good source. Um, he sells stuff reasonable. He's got lots of good reviews, lots of good feedback from guys across the United States. Um, he just subscribed to my channel. And he's, uh, uh, from what I can gather, he's a good guy. And he's a family guy. And, you know, I like to do business with family guys. I hadn't bought anything from him yet. And, Ryan, if you're watching this, I'm eventually going to come to you but i just hadn't been able to uh get around to it yet and uh my tracks have served me pretty well but um and i feel bad that you know i'd got him to price them but i wasn't able to get them from him i had to get them from somewhere quick uh because i had a bunch going on at the time and i couldn't dedicate enough time to waiting um so and when i say waiting he gets them to you in a few days but i was in the hospital with a newborn baby being born so um, it was one of those things we had to go get them where we could go pick them up. Uh, but anyways, you know, if you sell yourself short on these jobs, you're just screwing yourself. Um, there's enough work out here for everybody. I just got a thing from the United States, uh, forestry service about bidding on over 600 acres. And you got to be willing to travel state to state. And you got to have some major equipment and some major money. To do this but you know there's so many different avenues you can go with this business um you can stick to commercial you can stick to residential you can do both we basically do both but i promise you we probably do 80 to 90 percent residential for people because people this is still a new thing which is good because it's been around for a long time but it hadn't been around some of these rural communities at all. Um, and, you know, when you start tapping into these markets and start your little marketing program, when you start, uh, you know, really boosting your name out there, push it hard, uh, you're, you're going to get uh, some phone calls. But you need to know how to price it. And because when you price things so low, you really don't, you really look like you don't know what you're doing. A guy called me the other day, and the only reason I brought up the $800, $900 a day guy was because a guy called me the other day, and he asked me about pricing some clearing for him. When I gave him a price, his jaw dropped. He's like, man, that is crazy high. I was like, like, I thought it was reasonable. I mean, I've been doing this long enough now. I thought it was really reasonable. He was like, well, this guy priced, you know, he said he'd do it for like, 900 bucks a day i was like who and i i knew who he was talking about and i said well if he can do it hire him i mean i don't know what to tell you i said but just know that if he comes in and well you're not happy going to work because you're not charging enough money you tend to not do a good job so when you do a good job and you can get paid what you're supposed to get paid you know you take pride in that you take pride in your work and I guess my thing is, is when you take pride in something, you're going to do a good job. You're going to do a good quality job. But the biggest thing is, is if you price something so low and you don't want to be there and you're miserable, then you're not going to have a good name of, of doing a quality job. If you have a name of doing a quality job, you will stay busy and you can be a little bit higher than the other people. Um, <coughs> excuse me man i had to sneeze well that's my point in this video is 
try to go after a, a steak every night for dinner instead of the dollar menu at McDonald's. Because you will thank me if you do that. Um, if you if you get out and you price things so low, you're going to end up in financial trouble. And it's none of my business what anybody prices, but I guess if I can give a piece of advice based off of experiences of what I see and things and factual things that I that I know, then I'm going to give it to you and I'm not going to cut any crap with it. Um, we serve a pretty large area. I try not to go too many to too many overnight jobs unless it's something that's really, really, really worth going to because I stay busy enough in my own little spot. And the good thing about it is me staying busy in my own little area that I like to go to, well then, that that makes it even better because I don't have the overhead of the fuel and you know I don't have the overhead of traveling and the more you travel the more risk you have you have a, you know you actually the hell the more you travel you get flat tires you get pulled over by DOT you get this you get that and that, all that's fine because that's part of being in business but you know if you can if you can make money close to home I mean I'm I'm 30 minutes right now from my house which to me it's far enough um but i have to go lots farther a lot of other times i mean i i go across the state south and west a lot um but you know basically the i guess my point i don't want to beat a dead horse but price your price your jobs accordingly and and price it to make money don't price it just to get it um i was in business with a guy I've said this on other videos. I was in business with a guy for six, seven years, and we built a good landscape company, but he priced jobs. When he priced them, he priced them just to get them because he was not a business-minded person. So he just wanted to work. And, you know, I love working, but I like to make money. And if I'm not going to make money, I'd rather just be at home with my family. Um, and, you know... When you're pricing things so low, you really kind of it kind of turns the spotlight on you, and it makes you look sketchy to a lot of legit people. And you're going to get business, oh, of course, but you when you get that reputation of being so cheap, it's hard to go back really because people are like, well, you used to charge this. Why don't you? Why aren't you doing this now? Well, you don't want to look at them and tell them, well, because I couldn't afford to fix my machine, I couldn't afford to to order teeth, or I couldn't afford tracks, I couldn't afford to fix those hydraulic lines. It's a lot that goes into it. Now, your dozer guys, you know, they get a machine. You can run a dozer or a loader for 10, 20,000 hours. You can't run these machines for this long. Not, not a skid steer based model. You can't. You might be doing good to get 3,000 hours out of one. And if you get that, then you're still going to have to replace a lot of components on it because there's so much wear. You're constantly moving, you're constantly raising the boom, you're constantly grinding putting pressure on the machine there's a lot of things that go into this machine that a dozer don't have to worry about um a dozer's got a six-way blade or a four-way blade and up down side to side tilt um and they're intended to clear but they're not intended they don't take a beating like these machines take if you baby them and you know what you're doing so um that's basically my tip of the day is you know, price your jobs right, you'll be a lot happier. Your family, your wife will be a lot happier. Um, you know, just because if some if I inherited money from someone and I went and bought this equipment, that don't that that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean I'm gonna go price it cheap just to get work. I wanna be able to make a good living. I wanna retire and be able to chill out when I'm fifty five. I'm thirty three. When I'm fifty five is kind of my projected goal. I wanna just be able to do something else. Um so I want to enjoy life and enjoy working, you know. So that's basically uh, the point in this video is, you know, price your jobs like you want steak and you want to get off that dollar menu, even though we all eat off of it. Um, you know, just uh, just do a good job for uh, do a good job for people, price them right, and you'll stay busy as as you can stay. Y'all take care.